All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so today I'm going to talk about this video here that was uh, put out, what, yesterday? Two days ago, I guess. All right, I'm just now seeing it today. Um, and then afterwards, if I if I get time, uh, I'll address this comment from Roderick. Appreciate it. All right, so to start off with, <laughs> let's just listen to what this guy says. And keep in mind, this is 99.9% .9 of all the preachers today agree with this guy. He's just uh, one of the few that are bold enough to actually say what they believe. That they will cheat. So they got to get married. So they'll be faithful to a wife. That's the only reason we have marriage now. Okay? In the millennial reign, your word will be your bond. There will be no marriage and giving in marriage. You'll be like the angels in heaven. Perfect love. There will be no cheating and no looking across the aisle. And there, there will be a perfect harmony there. So there will be no marrying and giving in marriage. But we read all through there. See, God. Uh, see, but that but that but is that, that really it should be two T's, not one T. Because that's the doctrine. That's a but doctrine. All right. So think now. Just think about what he's about to say. Okay. He's saying, yeah, there's no marriage or giving in marriage, but. And giving in marriage. But we read all through there. See, God, let me explain to you how he said so good, God's going to keep it in the millennial way. <laughs> all right, let me, let me read what he just said. It's hard for me to hear. It's probably, it might be hard for you to hear. So I'm going to, I got the transcript right here. So let me read what he said. All right. Um, blah, 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 blah. There'll be no marrying and giving in marriage but we read all through there see darling let me explain to you honey sex is so good God's going to keep it in the millennial reign amen see darling let me explain to you honey sex is so good God's going to keep it in the millennial reign <laughs> and there we get a chuckle we get a chuckle because these are mockers and scoffers walking after their own lust just as the Bible says alright so uh, let's let's work backwards I guess let's go to 1st John 1st John I'm, so, I'm not even close here let's go to Jude in verse 18 how that they told you that there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. You think about what he's preaching here. He's preaching sex. He's preaching lust. Fleshly lust. And that's exactly what's going on here in the last time. Mockers in the last time walking after their own ungodly lust. Now, if that's not enough for you, we'll get another verse. 2 Peter chapter 3, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. All right, and that's exactly what we see these guys doing when they preach this doctrine of sex. Now when they talk about this millennial reign, they're talking about a thousand years after the Lord Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. And so I, I, I feel an imperative to tell you, hey, look, look for yourselves. There is no thousand year period after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven Okay, there is no millennial reign. There is no thousand year reign of anybody. It's not in Revelation 20. It's not anywhere at all in the Bible. There is no mention of Jesus Christ reigning a thousand years. And really, 
the Bible couldn't be more clear because it makes it very easily known, very plainly known, that Jesus reigns over the house of Jacob forever and of, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Jesus reigns forever. So this idea of a thousand year reign, it's not found in the Bible at all. If you actually read and believed Revelation chapter 20, you would realize, hey, talking about those of us that are the children of God, we live and reign with Christ during this unique time period that we're in now from the ascension of Jesus Christ to the promise of his return when he comes in the clouds of heaven. We reign with him right now. We have the Spirit of God dwelling in us right now and the second death has no power over us right now. We are kings and priests unto God right now. It, it makes no mention of Jesus reigning a thousand years. It no, makes no mention of Jesus reigning, period. It says they lived and reigned with Christ. They shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. We reign right now with Christ, those of us that are born of God, because Christ reigns forever. I don't know how you miss it. I, I really don't know how anybody misses it. Unless, of course, they don't believe what they read. And then, of course, if they don't believe, the veil is upon their heart. And, of course, they're not going to understand the simplicity of what's being written here. All right, so back to uh, Mr. Sex Machine here. All right, we read all through there. See, darling, let me explain to you, honey. Sex is so good... God's going to keep it in the millennial reign. He's talking about after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. All right, of course, we know that when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, that it is the end of the world. Right? It, I mean, as, as clear as can be. I, in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. The disciples asked Jesus, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And he comes in the clouds of heaven, and it's the end of the world. And when it's the end of the world, there is no more sex. All right? That's one of the things that are going to be done away with. That should be obvious from reading um, Genesis chapter 3, for example. Because we know sex was introduced into this world because Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and that we're gonna and that evil is gonna be done away with when when uh, the seed of the woman stomps his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying evil forever. All right, it should be pretty obvious. And then, of course, when Jesus says they will not be... <laughs> uh, this is in there. I just had a thought in my head here. In the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. The resurrection happens at the end of the world. In the resurrection... All right, so think about this. He's saying that the resurrection will happen and that, yeah, he's saying, yeah, they won't be marrying and given in marriage, but they'll continue to have sex. All right, so when they are resurrected, when we are resurrected, we are resurrected into eternal life. Right, so... By this logic, this guy's saying he's going to be in his resurrected body, just like when he was 16 years old, 
and he's going to be able to have sex forever and ever and ever because it's so good, honey. Honey, it is so good. Right? Honey, it is so, sex is so good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Sex is good. Sex is so good. That's what he's preaching. You think about that. Sex is so good that we're just going to be, he's going to be able to have sex forever. Boy, that's, ooh. Uh, right? I mean, how is that different than, than what the Muslims teach, really? See, um, it sounds great, right? I mean, I, I, it's going to fool a lot of people. It, it's fooled a lot of people. Like I said, 99.9% .9 of the preachers today believe this. They don't believe this, the Word of God. They believe this doctrine of eternal sex. Because it sounds great. Sex, I mean, like the Muslims. I mean, 72 virgins? Are you kidding me? Like the Mormons, you know, you got a whole planet of virgins to yourself, right? Same thing. Sex, sex, sex. It's all about sex. I mean, without the sex, what? Why would you even believe it, right? Except it, maybe apparently it never dawned on these guys that there's a world that awaits for us that are saved that is much greater than sex. Much greater. And really, how good is sex? Because you think of all the heartache and the pain that comes from a from a, a moment of pleasure is all it is just a moment of pleasure and then you think of the how many you know years of sorrow a moment of pleasure can bring heartache pain you have children that's great but then you worry about them right because you have great responsibility over them and then God forbid one of them should die I don't think uh, most of us can understand the pain of losing a child but there's also the pain of losing your wife you know, girlfriend, even. Just pain and sorrow for a moment of pleasure. For a moment of pleasure. It's weird. It, to me, it's weird. That this issue would be so important to these guys. But I understand that it's a phenomenon because we live in a world now where almost all of them teach this this fantasy mm -hmm. and you're gonna see one way or another that it this will never play out this will never play out so let's continue God wants you to have sex. Think about that. And look at the seriousness on his face. God wants you to have sex. Well, I mean, in a sense, yeah, God commanded Adam and Eve to procreate, to multiply. Right? And that's what they that that's what they did. And then, of course, Noah's sons and Noah's daughters-in-law they multiplied after the flood. They, um, you know, was fruitful and multiplied. Yes, that's true. Now, what he's talking about is in 
the life to come hereafter eternal life and so he's putting his hope into this idea that he will continue to have sex forever and ever like a raging bull and he's gonna find out the hard way there's something much greater that awaits for us that are God's children in the life to come hereafter. So holiness, are y'all okay out there? Yeah, hallelujah. So I can talk about that. Are y'all okay out there with me talking about eternal sex? Everybody okay? Yeah, oh yeah. Holiness, are y'all okay out there? Yeah, hallelujah. So I can talk about that. You're a raging pervert. Pretending like God is going to give you everlasting sexual life. And you know it. That's why there's that little bit of doubt. Like, hey, am I getting away with this? Are you guys believing my BS? Are you okay out there with me preaching against God and making a mockery out of the word of God? Are you okay with that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're okay with it because they're all a bunch of perverts. Right? So, uh, let's see. In, blah, 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 in the Menelanios families is going to all look like the, the layers? Liars? All of you are lucky to be That all of you just go all the time to the choirs. The little choirs. They're going to be innocent, sweet little children. And they're never going to do anything wrong. <laughs> they have a little more BS on top of it, right? That's uh, fun. Yeah. Perhaps children, kids. They have the most beautiful sight to see kids running. Yeah, and you're going to what, have, be having sex with these kids? Is that what's going on here? You're talking about sex? in one breath and then the next breath you're talking about kids is this do you think you're getting away with this oh no baby honey sex is so good oh no baby we don't have more babies what's he talking about We're going to have more babies than we've ever had, is what he said. This transcript is wrong. He just said, we're going to have more babies than we have ever had. Oh, no, baby, we're going to have more babies than we ever had. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of sex. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's see. Nobody left we ever had there won't there wouldn't be nobody left in a thousand years without children right so we gotta have sex what are you talking about there wouldn't be nobody left in the thousand years now again keep in context he's talking about after the Lord Jesus comes this imaginary thousand year period All right, so I think I've about had enough of this guy here Right, well, let's hear what he says about death. Anyone left in a thousand years if they weren't having children? Of course, they were all so deep. What? In the middle of the oil. Yeah. 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 So there, boom. There you go. Yeah, big smile. Well, so your children are going to be dying. If all things continue as they are since the beginning, they're mocking and scoffing the Word of God. There's going to be sex and death and a big smile on his face for a thousand years after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven so essentially Jesus Christ lied when he said the end of the world is when he comes in the clouds of heaven right all right so and, and I'm gonna uh, touch on that just here in a second here I'm gonna read this comment from Roderick because this is pretty easy 
simple stuff that he should know better. Um, but let me read the comment first. He says, good video, but again, you're discussing something that was, was I'm sorry, you're discussing something that was written not to you for this day, but rather for the church's warning for what was soon to come. 70 AD. Okay, so, all right, here's the problem. I'll get into this a little more. You're saying that you're not saved when you say that the word of God is not written for you. Okay, you're putting yourself on the wrong side of the fence. In fact, again, if you actually read your Bible without adding yourself, then you realize you're going to hell and you don't believe anything that's in the book. You see, it states John wrote that to the seven churches. That was their future, not ours. All right, so the seven churches all throughout Asia goes far beyond Jerusalem. Okay, but never mind, because we're not using common sense at all at this point, right? We're not going to put any thought into what you're actually saying. You're All you're really doing, Roderick, is putting yourself outside of the kingdom of God. That generation saw it happen. The end of the world means age. The, okay, so, yea, has God said that Jesus would come in the clouds of heaven at the end of the world, right? Just like the serpent got Eve to doubt the word of God, you yourself doubt the word of God. Of course, you don't believe it at all. And it was the end of the old covenant, not literally end of what we know as world, who's in? Jerusalem's in. Jerusalem, which is above, is free. I showed you. Jesus says, I go and prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again unto my come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. The true Jerusalem is above. Just like the true circumcision is of the cutting the flesh off the spirit, it's not cutting off a part of your pee pee. That's not the true circumcision. The, tr the true baptism is not pouring water over your head. The true baptism is the Spirit of God coming on and into you. That's the true baptism and so on and so forth. Okay, so uh, let's, let's uh, go to Revelation chapter 1 and consider what's being written here in the very first verse. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto only certain people, not you. Yeah, it's only being it's only for this group of people that are going to be long gone by the time anybody reads this. And then for hundreds and hundreds of years, this is going to do nothing but confuse people because it doesn't mean anything. And in fact, this never should have been left in the Bible at all. And if you have a Bible that has the book of Revelation, you should just remove it and take it out. Because it's not for you, and it doesn't serve any purpose at all for you. Right? Is that what you're saying, Roderick? If any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book and so I mean that's what you're saying Roderick that this does take this out because it's it means nothing and how in the world do you do find his servants as only people in the seven different churches all, through, all throughout Asia and somehow think that it only applies to Jerusalem at 70 AD I, I don't think you're putting any thought into this and I wonder is it a matter of never having read the book of Revelation is it just a matter of hey if you read it often enough the light bulb will turn off or turn on in your head <laughs> excuse me I mean because I've read the book of Revelation a number of times and I take it very serious 
It's very important to me that I understand it. Yeah, I don't want to get nothing wrong. I, I Look, I already know. I'm not going to convince anybody of anything. Well, all I'm going to do is uh, do my best to plant the seeds of truth in hopes that somebody that desires the truth will pick up on it. That's all I can do. That's the only thing I can do. Now, this here, in the very first verse, when it says, to show unto his servants, that's talking about me. I am the servant of the Lord. I have the Spirit of God in me. I am a child of God. I am born of God. I am a son of God. And so this revelation of Jesus Christ is to me, for me, and it's to show me things which must shortly come to pass. You think about, all right, so, you know, let's say I live to be 80 years old. That would be fantastic. I, you never know. I might not live another day. But let's say for theoretical, hypothetical, I live to be 80. Okay? Take that 80 years and then compare it to eternal life. How long is eternal life? Is it a billion years? No. Not even close. A billion times a billion times a billion times a trillion squared by the gazillions it's forever so this 80 years it's nothing and it's gonna play out that way that, that will you'll be looking back and think man that was this life on this earth was so short so crazy so when Jesus mm -hmm. says uh, behold I come quickly or uh, we read here in Revelation things which must shortly come to pass shortly it's gonna be short it's gonna play out to be true and you're gonna see all right and he sent and signified by his angel unto his servant John see John got visions from the angel of the Lord these visions are here to show us things which must shortly come to pass and everything in the book of Revelation is supported all throughout the Bible it's amazing it is amazing for the time is at hand I mean it's gonna come it's gonna come and when, when it comes, it's going to feel like it came too quick. It really is, especially for the unbelievers. Especially for the unsaved. All right, and Jesus Christ, uh, faithful witness, first begotten of the dead, the prince of the kings of the earth. Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests unto God. He, those of us that are born of God, we are kings and priests of God right now. Right now in uh, First Peter chapter 2, we are a royal priesthood. I don't know how people miss this. I really don't. You can't put simple things together. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood and holy nation. We are kings and priests unto God right now. We can't figure that out. I, I, I don't think these guys can figure it out. They're too busy to thinking about having sex with children for thousands of years. All right, behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him. So you think about this, man. You think about it. every eye. Well, that was it. Just 
it was just the people in Jerusalem. Oh, no, no, no. You, well, let's, that don't work. Let's change it up a little bit. Okay, so this is only for the people of seven churches throughout Asia. It is only for them. So when it says every eye shall see, and that's not really true. That's kind of a that's kind of a white lie, right? The little bit, little teeny lie. It's not true, right? So you're taking away the words of this book to fit your doctrine. And they also which pierced them, and all kindreds of the earth, all kindreds of the earth. Well, it's not all kindreds of the earth. It's just um, you know seven churches and some people in Jerusalem. Because it doesn't really mean what it says, does it? Because because that would destroy your doctrine. That would destroy this idea that everything was fulfilled in 70 AD. Right? You can't talk about that. And you got to kind of ignore that as much as possible. I mean, you deny it, right? And that don't mean what it says. And um, there's no, not a big deal. I'm just going to ignore that. And it's not really there. I mean, how else are you going to deceive people? I and mean, you can't honestly take a look at this and take it for what it says and then preach this doctrine of 70 AD it don't work does it it, it absolutely conflicts you can't justify it at all you can't reconcile this verse this part of verse 7 all kindreds of the earth shall well all kindreds of the earth you can't it just does not work. So you got to ignore it as much as possible. Uh, and pretend like, well, I don't know. So maybe the other guys, they don't know either. And the other guys, they probably don't know. And you're going to fool people. I get it. Mark 13. All right. So we're getting, we, we get warning after warning after warning about deceivers, and liars, and people that say they believe in Christ. But they're liars and deceivers, right? When Jesus is asked about what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world, he says, Take heed, lest any man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying that I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. And lo and behold, we live in a world where many people say Jesus is the Christ and deceive many. All right, so... When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, the sun shall be dark, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. It's the end of the world. And he shall send his angels, and they shall gather together his elect. That's those of us that are saved. All right, if you're taking yourself out of this, then by your own words, you have condemned yourself. So you can't blame the Lord when that day comes and you're not saved. He didn't condemn you. By your own words, you condemned yourself. By your own words, you put yourself out of this moment. So don't blame anybody but yourself. All right. Now at the, at the end of this here, I think I scroll too fast. You just read a little bit more. You keep on reading a little bit. Keep on going just a little further. And you see, well, this was only this was only written to the Jews and a, and a group of his buddies, and it doesn't apply to us. And what it doesn't it doesn't apply to the seven churches all throughout Asia either. Who who does it apply to? A couple. Of drinking buddies it, the, really this shouldn't even be in the Bible right is that what you're saying that what Jesus Jesus is talking about what people way back to you know that was a long time ago and really there's no purpose for this to be in the Bible it's not to you I mean, is that what you're saying right is that what you're saying I don't know if I can do this here. I don't know if anybody can read this. Right? I don't know if I can. All right, let me do it this way.
I don't know if I can do it. That's not me. Ah. Oh. Well, there's a lot more Jimmy Hennings than I thought. I would. I just want to do it this way. I feel like I. There we go. Is this me? Yep. That's me. And I've had this on my Facebook for years. And what it says is, <clears throat> and what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Mark 13, verse 37. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Okay? What Jesus is saying here is not just to the people that were standing next to him, his drinking buddies, or whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to call it, his disciples, right? It wasn't to, you know, Peter and James and John and Andrew. He wasn't just saying it to them. The four guys. Right, so when he talks about all this stuff, him coming in the clouds of heaven, this is, he's talking to everybody. And not just for that generation. Not just for the generation of old. And really, not just those of us that are alive today. But he's saying it to all. Everybody that has ever lived. Everybody that will ever live. From here on forward. From the beginning to the end. Every single person that has ever existed. That's who he's talking to. And what I say unto you. I say unto all. Watch. Watch. 